In this tutorial for beginners, I'm going to show you how to use Topaz AI to improve the quality of your videos. Screen that you will be greeted with when you get started with the Topaz Video AI. It reads, drag and drop videos. So you can drag and drop your videos from maybe a desktop onto the software to import it. Or alternatively, you can browse videos on your device by selecting this button right here. To find the video that I want to enhance, you can do the same. Now I'm going to select this prime bottle that I filmed earlier on. There is lots of camera shake in this video and of course, it's not the quality that we are looking for. We want to enhance the quality of this video. This video currently is 1280 720p at 29 frames, almost a full 30 frames per second. We want to improve this. I've also made sure that there is camera shake in the video because there is an, an enhancement that you can use in this software. Now let's improve the video. Here under enhancements, I want to press this button here. You can see it improves the visual quality of your video. It is important to select the correct input type, progressive, interlaced or interlaced progressive to list the appropriate AI models of for your footage. That's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. So the video type at the moment is progressive. I want you to leave this on progressive. AI model, so the AI models that are currently available, we're going to leave it on what it's on right now. Parameters, auto, this is where we're going to make some changes. So if we select this, you can see that we have relative to auto and manual. Select manual. These are the settings that you will begin with if you've got a regular piece of footage. Now let's get into the next interesting parts that you want to know when improving your footage using the Topaz Video AI. We can fix compression. What this does is the higher the compression you have on your clip, the higher you should put this value. So if you've already compressed your video, you want to make sure that this is high up. If of course, you have low compression value, you want to keep this at zero. What I advise is if you're unsure, set this to 50%. I'm going to do this right now. As well as this, you can also change certain camera properties. For example, you can improve the detail of your video. This is for example, let's say there's a detail on screen that is very fine and you want to improve the quality because it might be blurred or not look as detailed as you want. You can't see all of the details. Using this parameter, you can improve the details of those fine objects. Now we don't have too many fine objects in this video, but you can see a little bit of detail on the wall here, a few cracks that we can define. Keep note of this because I'm gonna improve the detail slightly. Let's bring this up to 50% so that you can see the difference in the final footage. Then there is sharpen. What a sharpen does is it makes the edges of images more fine. Let's say for example, the edge of this table, it will make it more fine, but pull this too high and it will make it a white line because it's trying to sharpen the edges and it will remove some of the pixels on the edge in order to make it look sharper. That is why sometimes you have a white line on the edge of objects when you sharpen the image. You can also reduce noise. Now noise is the noise that you're seeing on the screen. It's the grain of your footage. When you're removing noise, it will try to remove the grain of your video. Remove too much noise and you might find the video might become blurry. So keep in mind, if you don't have any noise on your video, do not scroll this all the way to the top. You wanna to keep this to a low level as possible because this will of course make your video more blurry when removing the noise. Dehalo is also a parameter that you can change. We don't need to worry about that as a beginner. There is also anti-alias and de-blur which is self-explanatory. If you want to de-blur something, maybe some movement while you're moving the camera, then you will scroll this all the way to the value of your desire to see the result in the finished piece. Anti-alias, for example, is when you have this phenomenon happen in your video where a pattern is not recognized and instead of the camera processing the pattern on screen, it will actually display these streaky white lines. This can happen if you have a certain pattern jumper, for example, or if you're filming some windows from a far distance and the camera cannot recognize the pattern of the window. This is a rare phenomenon. So if you want to anti alias, this is what you would need to do in order to have that happen in your video. So in order to recover your video when this phenomenon occurs, of course you would need to scroll this the other way. In this example, I don't need to do either 
so I'm going to keep it at zero. Now there's more to go through, we're not done just yet. You can also add noise. Now we've just explained what noise is of the video. It's the grain that you will see in low light conditions on a video and it will cause it to be grainy because the camera cannot find the light values to fill those pixels. When this happens, you will have grain on your footage. That's what noise is on your video. You can actually add grain, maybe for an artistic direction that you want to add to your video. In this example, we're going to leave this at zero. It's not something that we want to do in this footage. Then there is recover detail. Now recover detail is going to be, of course, what it says in the tin. You're going to be recovering details that have been lost maybe through movement or because of the quality of the video. If you want to recover those details because you cannot see them too clearly, or as clearly as you would like or desire in the final finished enhanced video, then of course you will scroll this to your desired effect. It's currently by default on 20 for a value. If you want to recover some more, of course you could scroll this up. I advise leaving this on 50. There is also focus fix. In cases of iPhones, for example, occasionally your autofocus camera might blur from time to time. If this occurs in your video, then this is where you can of course fix that blur so that you can focus on the image. You can have this on normal or strong. In this example, I'm going to leave this on off. It's not something that we need in this video. There are a few more parameters to go through because you can go in depth when enhancing your video with Topaz. We have frame interpolation. Now this is usually for something when you're doing slow motion. If you don't have a slow motion in your video, you're not trying to achieve that slow motion look, I would leave this off. It's not something that you would usually do as a beginner. Stabilization. Now I'm going to show you stabilization because I believe that beginners when using the software might want to stabilize a shot if you've got a lot of camera shake. This is a perfect feature for beginners that are trying to film a subject. If we select this, you can see there are a few methods. We have full frame or auto crop. In full frame, you will get the full image on screen and the movement will be as smooth as possible using this stabilization. With auto crop, it will correct the flow of the movement and crop the image so it may appear as a smaller frame. It might zoom in on the frame. So in this example, we're going to leave it at full frame because I want to see everything on screen because my prime bottle at times I get close up to it and if the image is cropped, I won't be able to see the entire bottle. So let's leave this on full frame. The strength is going to be how strong this stabilization is applied. Now I'm going to leave it on 50%, of course, so I can gauge how this stabilization will work on the final video. We also have roller shutter and jittery motion. These you can leave empty for a beginner try, but you can hover over the top of these to find out what they mean. Now we've done our stabilization. I'm happy with that result as a beginner. Let's close that tab. There is also motion de blur. Again, quite self-explanatory, but let's have a look. With motion de blur, of course, your video might at times have blur when you're moving the camera quite quickly. When in a low light video, you might also have grain, which is of course the next parameter that you would toggle. In this example, I don't have too much motion blur because I haven't moved my camera fast and I haven't made any fast movement to cause any blur from movement in this low frame rate video. So I'm going to toggle this off because I don't have blur. Next up is grain. If we select grain, we can toggle this on and off. And of course you can go even further and correct any grain in your video, which will normally occur in a low light video when the camera cannot recognize the light coming into the lens. And of course it is then resulting in the video having some grain. We're going to toggle this off because it's well lit and we don't have too much grain because the quality of the video is okay in that regard. Now let's get onto the all important video quality of the file. We're going to select right here and there is a codec of the video. Most videos for beginners will be H.264. We're going to keep this nice and simple but there are also other video codecs that you can enter in this parameter. For example, there's ProRes and QuickTime files. We're going to keep this at H.264 as when you're uploading online, maybe to a social media website, H.264 is the standard. So if your video file is not yet in H.264 codex, you will be able to convert this to H.264 if you select this. So that's what I advise 
as a beginner. Then there is the profile. We're going to leave this on high. The target bit rate you can actually have on auto. But in this example, we're going to select 180 so we can get a better bit rate for the video. We can improve the quality. Then the audio mode, if we select this drop down, you can see that we can convert the audio. In this example, we don't want to do that. We want to leave the audio exactly as it is. And I'm going to select copy. Container, here's where you can change the video format. You can have MP4, MKV or MOV. For most Windows users and those of you that are uploading to online websites, maybe social media, you want to select MP4. Keep it simple to begin with. But of course, if you want to convert your video to a QuickTime MOV file, you can do this as well. You can also apply a LUT to your image. Now we don't have any LUTs installed and for beginners, this isn't something that I would advise you get started with just yet. So now we have our format of our video, the target bitrate, the profile, and the changes that we've made. But there's a little bit more. If we go up to video settings and we select frame rate, you can see that we can improve the frame rate of the video. As opposed to having this less than 30 frames per second, we can now bump this up to 60 frames per second. So we're doubling the quality of frame rates there. So that, let's have a look at the final finished piece to see how that turns out. As well as that, we can change the output of the video. It was at 720p. We're gonna bump this up all the way to 4K. So with the same quality that we've just applied manually, we're now bumping this up to 60 frames per second and 4K. Let's have a look at how this turns out. Now we're onto the important part. We're about to export our file. In the bottom right hand corner right here, you want to select the drop down over export, then select export as. Then go back to the button and select export. Now we're about to export our file to our destination. Select where you want to export the file and of course give your file a name. Make sure you do not delete the .mp4 and give your file a name. I'm going to call this Prime Export. And then select save when you're happy with the title to export the video. Once this is exported, let's show you the two quality videos side by side. So I'm going to show you what the original video looked like and the new 4K improvements. So I'm gonna add some audio also right here. This is Prime Ice Pop in 720, 30 frames per second with a little bit of camera shake here and there. And we're gonna see what this looks like once we've upgraded the footage using Topaz. In this example, we've been using the trial version of Topaz Video AI and some of the exporting capabilities are not available in the demo. So keep that in mind when you're trying Topaz Video AI. I realized that I needed to drop down the resolution from 4K to something else. And we've done that right now. Let's take a look. And this is the final piece exported from Topaz Labs, the trial version, hence why we have a watermark over the image. It has stabilized the shot when we have a little bit of camera shake. And it's also now in 1920, originally 720p, from 30 frames per second to now 60 frames per second. Don't forget to subscribe right here to the Mr. Money YouTube channel for more. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Check out that camera shake, now stabilizing. See you in the next one.